possibly the best player in the NFL. I think the coverage I've been watching pretty universally is saying that he's the best player in the NFL. Uh, brings a kind of political epicenter in sport to Charlotte in a way that I think we should be excited about. Uh, and this kind of response set up a lot of the thematic responses to Cam Newton over the course of the season, uh, leading up to, as we talked about for the last two weeks, when he's discussing his status as an African American quarterback in the contemporary NFL. Uh, the Panthers also played the Cowboys in, uh, thanks, on Thanksgiving Day, and leading up to that game, Deadspin had, had only weeks before released photographs of former Panthers defensive end Greg Hardy's domestic abuse case, which was um, a source of enormous controversy in 2014 here in Charlotte, uh, both, on, both as to whether the Panthers handled it well, whether their uh, initial hesitation to suspend them was appropriate, and then whether their uh, uh, decision to eventually suspend him after the course case fell apart was appropriate as well. But nobody saw a picture of the evidence until uh, this year. And this really parallels the kind of crisis that emerged from the NFL around the Ray Rice videos. Uh, domestic violence issues in sports are typically um, shrouded in mystery and invisibility. People wonder at what happened. Here are two recent cases in the NFL where it was visualized. And the NFL's response uh, when these images came out became much more decisive than it has in the past, and this called into question both the NFL's record on women's issues and domestic violence, but also uh, the NFL taking some positive steps to hire more women uh, and to, uh, to try to make their uh, penalties on domestic violence a lot more severe. So uh, a lot of people are criticizing the NFL for, for being reactionary rather than proactive. I think that those are legitimate criticisms, but we may see something emerging out of this that is meaningful. Uh, Roger Goodell just gave a press conference the other day uh, at the Super Bowl saying that uh, they're, they're going to extend the so-called Rooney Rule, which is a, a rule designed to uh, require greater diversity hiring practices, especially at the head coach level, uh, mostly directed at people of color, uh, that they're going to extend that policy to the executive level in the NFL and extend it to not only people of color, but um, uh, women and other underrepresented groups within the NFL's power structure. The very infamous Josh Norman versus Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, events took place on December 20th in, in, uh, in the Meadowlands against the Giants. Uh, the the left-hand picture is Norman uh, popping up Beckham in the head, and then the really, really problematic moment um, at the end of a play when the play was already over, Beckham launching himself helmet first at Norman and hitting him in the side of the helmet. Um, this, this raised a lot of controversy over several things that have been going on in the NFL, including accusations in the pregame that Panthers players, especially a practice uh, squad player, was uh, uh, aiming uh, uh, homophobic uh, slurs at Beckham that the Panthers carried it out on the field and they've been doing this all season and this was a threat. Um, and, also that, uh, and also that Beckham lost his temper and this was really the culmination of that. Uh, and, and, and this is where it crossed the line. I mean, they, they were basically, uh, there, there was basically a, a miniature MMA bout in the middle of a football game the whole time, but this is where it really crossed the line because it raised the issues of concussions in the NFL. What a lot of people acknowledged was there's no way they can't suspend Beckham for a game and, and then say in a press conference, we care about concussions and long-term health. The Will Smith concussion movie just came out. Uh, the NFL settled the lawsuit, but it, the, the problem is not going away. So the NFL really, uh, a lot of people said, had to suspend Beckham for a game to make people believe that they're serious on concussions, and so they did. And then finally, uh, in January 2016, uh, much to our happiness, uh, the Panthers beat the Seattle Seahawks in the playoffs. They were not favored in the game. Yet another thematic for us, those of us in Charlotte, yet, yet another thematic frustration of the Panthers being constantly underrated until now, when everybody believes that they're going to destroy the Broncos, which makes me a little bit nervous as a fan. Um, I think it could happen, but when everybody starts to love you, you get a little nervous. Uh, and they became the new cockiest team in the NFL. And one of the things we've learned about the Seattle Seahawks 
uh, example over the last several years is that cocky comes with a certain racial politics, especially surrounding one of the people in this uh, photograph, Richard Sherman, uh, who was uh, last year in the and called a thug and gave a press conference talking about the, th that as a racially coded word, maybe, maybe even in sport the new N word. Um, and so some of what comes with being the quote unquote cockiest team in the NFL really starts to surround Cam Newton. And he's, he's kind of the leader of, of, of uh, or, or, the, or the, the top image of, of a team that is, um, is uh, very, very demonstrative when they score, that believes they're going to beat their opponents severely. And that's some of where the objections around the Newton go to. So let's talk about Cam Newton. So going back to when Cam Newton was evaluated for the draft, a lot of the things that have followed him around in his NFL career so far can be traced back to the initial evaluations when he was at Auburn University and the NFL was trying to figure out if he was worth the top pick. Most evaluators at the time argued that the other first round quarterback in the draft named Blaine Gout from Missouri, who's depicted here, was more NFL ready, smarter, ready to run a pro offense. Gabbard's college numbers were uh, far inferior. Uh, but there are still prototypical uh, expectations for quarterbacking that align with race that very much had to do with the evaluations of Gabbard versus Newton. The Panthers took Newton first overall, and in retrospect, if they did it the other way, and I don't think they were looking at Gabbard, but if they selected Gabbard, it would have been a disastrous decision. Probably would have been, for those of you that follow football, probably would have been somewhere on the level of the San Francisco 49ers picking Alex Smith instead of Aaron Rodgers. Uh, because the distance between their talents is so significant. Blaine Gabbard went on to have one of the worst rookie seasons in the history of the NFL. Cam Newton broke Peyton Manning's passing record. Which, by the way, right, Peyton Manning is the, I mean, it's really interesting that they're going against each other right now, because what a lot of people are covering this as the new prototype, against the old prototype, and that part of that gets called out the race. Another thing that happened uh, in the evaluation process is former head coach John Gruden does this quarterback camp for ESPN, and he has prospects come on television with him, and he puts them on the whiteboard, and he shows them film, and he tries to, he tries to catch them in uncomfortable situations. And when he did this to Newton, he said, well, you know, tell me about some verbiage from your Auburn offense which a lot of people said was a remedial offense, sort of like one read and so on and 